Hello my science friends, I'll show you how to draw the G-protein couple receptor pathway in this video. This is part of my signal learning pathway series. You can find the full list on my website, drawbarmed.com. I'm a scientific illustrator. I teach at the University of Amsterdam. I'm making these videos so scientists around the world can also make professional figures for their research publications. These videos will never go viral on YouTube, so the ad revenue will not be enough to support the project. You can support me by donating through the thank Thanks button below so I can focus on creating these tutorials. I get a lot of emails from scientists in the developing countries where they don't have the budget to hire a scientific illustrator. By supporting me, you can support the scientists around the world. You can also subscribe to my social media and my newsletter and so you can follow up with the progress. Without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. First, we need to make a cell. I'll create an ellipse and by default, the outline is black. And make the outline thicker and switch it to a color that I want my cell to be. In this tutorial, I choose cyan. In the next step, we need to put a radial gradient into the cell. We need the gradient to start from the center of this ellipse. That's why we need to come up here to the upper right click on this magnet icon, which means snapping. This function will allow Inkscape to locate the center point of a shape for us. Once you find the center point, click and drag. Then we can make this radial gradient. By moving the gradient node, we can manipulate the shape with the gradient. We need a longer arm on the horizontal side. Right now, let's change the color of the gradient. Have the node selected and come down here in the swatches to click on the color you want. Then the center node will be white. Now, let's create the G protein couple receptor. It is a seven transmembrane protein. Let's grab the rectangle tool and we need a thinner outline. And I'll switch the outline back to black. Second shape we need is an ellipse. And the width of the ellipse should be the same as the width of the rectangle. So we can fit this ellipse perfectly onto the rectangle. Now let's make a copy of the ellipse and move it to the bottom side of the rectangle. We need to combine in this shape with the rectangle. Let's select both of them and come to the menu open path drop down menu you can find union click on it then we can combine the two shapes so now we have this rod shape that can represent the transmembrane domain i will then fill it with a linear gradient let's come up here to switch the gradient mode to linear click and drag and then we can have the gradient. We need three gradient stops. So let's come up here to, so we need, let's activate the fill and stroke tab. If you cannot find it, you can go to object and click on fill and stroke. So when you move the cursor underneath the gradient slide, the cursor will change into a plus sign. And when you click your mouse, you can create a new gradient stop. Okay, now let's put some color into our gradient. Um, so have the gradient stop selected, come to the swatches and click on the color you want. I'll use purple for the transmembrane domain. And the middle color will be white. And the top ellipse, I will use a lighter purple. So this is how you create a rod shape. And now I will duplicate the rod shape to seven of them. We only have six because when I was live streaming, I miscounted the number. I'll give an extra domain later. Now let's move on to the next step. We need to align these transmembrane domains. Let's open the align and distribute tab. We can find them in object. And down here, click it. With all the rods selected, first we align them to top edges. Click on even horizontal gaps and be sure they are perfectly aligned. 
Let's grab the pen tool to create the domain that's in between these transparent burn domains. Uh, we need to remove the fill. And I will also I will change the stroke color to purple. So everything is in synergy. I'll just quickly copy them and put them in between the transmembrane domain. I think they are too twisted. I move the nodes a little bit to smooth them then. Now we will start to create the signaling proteins. So we'll just use some simple geometric shape. So first let's create an ellipse. We need a radial gradient in this ellipse. The center color is also white. Which color should I use? Let me try out this cyan. Okay, but it looks too similar to this cell, to the, to the cytosol. I think it's better to change it to yellow. And that's labeled as protein. It is PI3K. And PI3K indirectly interact with PIP3. So we need to create an arrow with the dash line. Let's use the pen tool to create a line. Then we come to the fill and stroke tab. In the stroke style, we can find markers. When you open the drop down menu, there are many types of arrowhead you can choose from. I will use this one. Now let's come up here, open the dashes drop down menu. Uh, and then we can select the dash line we need. Great, then we can complete this step of indirect interaction. So there are a few more proteins downstream. I will just copy the protein that we already made and change the label and change the arrow back to solid line. And it is also better to change the color of the protein. Switch EDK1 to blue. The font I use is Arial. Arial is recommended by many journals because it is the default font in a Windows system. Change, and I change AKT to magenta. And AKT needs to go into the nucleus. So we need to create a nucleus. I'll copy the cell, scale it down. And when you scale things down, some uh, they will also transform the thickness of the outline. I'll make it into three points wide again. And I will come to the stroke style tab, make the outline into dash lines and change the cap style to round cap. This can create the pores on the nucleus. Then our AKT can go into the nucleus through the pore. This is a simplified version of the G-protein couple receptor pathway. If you want more elaborate version, let me know in the comment. How else should I elaborate in this pathway? Then I can update the tutorial in the future. I like this way of working together with you guys. So don't be shy to comment. I'll see you in the next pathway.